right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the upper right hand corner. I'm going to click on the UCS, the user coordinate system. Click on top. At this point, I can now start working on my drawing. In order for me to start working on my drawing, I need to click on something. What is that something that I'm going to click on? Sketch. sketch. Good. Okay. Hopefully, you only have one sketch. If you have multiple sketches, you did something incorrect. I have multiple sketches, but I didn't do it immediately. Okay. Everything hopefully is drawn on one sketch, though. Now. Rosa had a problem the other day where she didn't have her origin showing up. Okay? And what the problem was, and I didn't catch it at the time, was that right up here where you can pick your geometry plane, your front, your top, your right side, what ended up happening was Rosa accidentally clicked on the little eyeball next to origin and she turned it off. Just make sure that you don't make that mistake. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is having your drawing have all of its dimensions on it. If you look at this drawing, you will notice that I have a dimension for my large circle, my smaller circle. I have the length and the height of my rectangle already indicated. Okay? If any of those are not dimensioned for you, what you are going to do is in the upper corner, just underneath where it says Learning Center, you are going to see a dimension tool. There is also a shortcut for it of the letter D. You can select on that dimension and then simply come over to the object that you need to dimension, whatever line it is, Left click on it and then it will act just as it would if you created the object. So you can put in the value of 10, the value of 45, 30, or 70. This is another question that comes up a lot. Mr. Q, my dimension is not in the same spot as yours. Does it matter? Yes or no? No. I can care less where the dimension is. The only thing I care about this dimension is correct, okay? And then the last most common question that I get, especially from Pickle in the Middle, <laughs> is the following. Well, it's mostly in the, that gives me the questions, but occasionally Pickle gives me them too. How come my drawing is a different size than yours? Okay, so, Right off the bat, it's because I have things set up a little bit different on my screen. But the second part of it is, hey, go put it away. You still are paying attention just because I'm screen recording it for you. The second part of it is, is that it all has to do with how far it's zoomed in or zoomed out. Okay? Now remember, if you're using a mouse, it's the middle rolling wheel. If you roll it towards you, just a couple of clicks, that's zooming out. If you take two fingers on your touchpad and you push them up, that is zoom out, okay? If all of a sudden, heck breaks out and you have no idea where in the world your drawing went, the easiest thing to get it back is to by simply going up to the top view and double clicking on it and that will automatically zoom and extend. Zoom extent just means it'll zoom and show you everything that is on your drawing. Now keep in mind, if you draw some little rogue drawing little mark somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, when you do a zoom extent, guess what it's going to do? It's going to grab that, and it's going to grab whatever your other parts of your drawing are. So just be careful of that. So moving forward, what we're going to do today is we are going to look at... Out of the gun. Come on. I want this here. <clears throat> what we're going to do today is we're going to look at this. Pickle, pay attention. Matter of fact, I'll take the phone. 
Bring it up. Take it away from class time. Let's go. Set it right there. Thank you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on working on these end circle pieces. Somebody tell me the outer diameter size. Um, 35. Somebody tell me the smaller diameter. 20. Okay, thank you. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to go ahead and switch back to here. I'm going to zoom out a couple of spots. I'm also going to take my object and I'm going to push it over to the left, or excuse me, to the right. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a middle mouse hold. Middle mouse button hold. Um, here's how you can do it also. One of the things that our mice are a little on the touchy side for whatever reason, probably because they've been dropped 500 times. Sometimes when you go to zoom out, things don't really, they're not happy. Sometimes when you go to do the middle mouse button to, to pan, for whatever reason, sometimes mine turns into the panning that it's supposed to. Other times it kind of does this like arrow thing and I'm like stuck. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm assuming it's something with my mouse. Another trick that you can do is simply just zoom out. Move your cursor wherever you want it to zoom in and just shift your drawing that way. Okay. Once I have my drawing shifted, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sketch thing and I'm just going to move it out of my way for right now because it's kind of bothering me. So I'm just going to move it. Yeah, exactly. You can seriously move it. Okay, I can move it wherever I want. I'll park it over here just because that's out of my way. Just hover over where it says sketch one. You can left click and then you can move it wherever you want. Just don't close it out. Next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna create those two circles. So I go into the circle command. Now, if you don't have a circle command up here and you'll see sketch, that's a good reminder that you need to go back down to sketch and, and go back into it. What's not working? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Jay Lang, pay attention. Okay. Johnny, you good? Good? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, go into my circle command. I'm gonna come over to my original center point, which happens to be the origin of the entire drawing. I'm gonna hover over the center point, and then I'm gonna slowly move over to my left. What? No, you just hover. Just hover over that middle and then slowly move over to your left. As you do so, you will get a yellow dotted or dashed line that shows up. I don't care how far you are away from the object. Go ahead and left click, create a circle, put in a value of 35.
gotta make sure you gotta make sure you're in sketch first. Double click on the sketch. Nope, no, 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 no. Excellent, 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 excellent. Double click on the sketch you've already created. Yep. Now you're in that sketch. Now you create a circle. Go off that center point there, hover over it, and slide over. I never told you a dimension. So, 
Next thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure I'm still in the circle command. If it's highlighted, you know you're in it. If it's not highlighted, go ahead and either hit the C key on your keyboard or hit the icon. Hit the center point, stretch out, type in a value of 20. Okay. Easy peasy, here's what I'm going to do. I've done a lot of work already. I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark. I want to go ahead and then go back into my sketch again by just double clicking it. So it's just a good confirmation for you after you've done a lot of work, especially with this being a web-based program. You never know when the this, excuse me when the internet's going to disconnect on on you. All right. So now that we have this object eyes up here, if I look at I look at this object, you will notice that I have a line that runs straight up here that is tangent to these circles. Tangent, if you think about it from math class, means a line that touches on the edge of a circle but does not cross through it. Okay? Think of a basketball. A basketball is tangent to the floor when it's touching it. If it cut through it, we've got a serious issue with time, space, and relativity, okay? So in order for us to go ahead and draw that tangent line, we've got to do a couple of things. The first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to come up here into the line command. And I'm going to click somewhere on this circle. I really don't care where I click. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click here. Right-click, escape out of the line command. Does that look anything like it's tangent? Not even anything remotely close. What we need to do now... What's that? It's not past what? It's not passing through yet, but it would cross right through it, and it would, it would cut off this whole top half here, and this piece here would cut off that little piece right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find something that's called a tangent constraint. Directly under where it says learn, bleh, learning center, you have that dimension tool that I already talked about earlier, and then you have another one that's called constraints. Click on the little turn down and see if you can find something that we were just talking about. Does anybody see anything we were just talking about? Yeah. What, do we, what, what one do you see? I like easy one. Easy, easy, easy. All right. So I want to get into tangent. What can I do? There's two functions I can do it with. Function number one is... Choose one. Click tangent. Click tangent. What's function number two? What's my other option? T. T. Good. Okay. I'm just going to click tangent. Yep. Now, when we do tangent, it's asking us to do two things. First thing it's asking us to do, select the first line. Then pick your, first, your second object that you want to go tangent to. In this case, I'm going to pick the circle. Moves it over so it's tangent. Yes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm still in that tangent command because it's highlighted up here. Select on my line, select on my circle. There it is. Yeah. I'm going to go into my line command again. This time I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm in my, I clicked on my circle. Watch what I'm going to do right over here. I'm going to bring my cursor over and now when we look at this little icon that shows up below my big circle I have two items that show up the first one that looks like a T that means that the point is touching on that line or that circle or whatever the second one is the same icon we just used what was that icon again? Tangent. okay 
So right now it's saying it's on the line or on the object, and it is what? Tangent. So this time I can just click it. I've got this little tail here. Olivia, how do I get rid of this tail? Escape. All right. I want to fix this end over here to get it so that it is tangent also. Again, coming up to tangent. Select on my two items. Okay. And it should automatically fix it, which it did. If you don't remember if this side was tangent or not, go ahead and do the same thing for those. You can't apply too many tangencies to a drawing. So now that we are to this point, the next thing that we have to do is we've got to make another piece over here. Now, we did a lot of work over here, right? Yeah. Okay. This work is identical to this work. What command do you think you might use? Very good. Most people think that you could just use copy. But copy, what copy does is it makes an identical clone of what was there. So if it was a left-handed clone, well, it's or a left-handed object, the clone of it is going to be left-handed. Whereas if we use mirror, our left-handed object now turns into a what? Right-handed object. Whoa. I'll, I'll take a look at it later. Okay. Here. All right. So what I'm going to do is, do you notice in the center, I've got this weird looking line? Okay. In order for us to mirror, what I need to do is I need to have what I call a fold line. So that weird line was just that. It was a construction line. Now, a construction line, if you think back to our AutoCAD days, construction line or even our drafting days the construction line is something that is there but it's not shown in your final drawing okay or your final object so here's how we're going to do it we're going to come up to the line command i'm going to pick my center point my origin again i'm going to left click i'm going to draw it straight up and before i unclick I'm going to come over to this icon right here. It's called construction. You can hit the Q on your keyboard also, and you can toggle between construction and non-construction. So I'm going to select my line and then just go up to construction. Okay, it's two icons over from what looks to be the, the letter A. Okay. How did I get it? Yeah. What's that? Okay, so watch. So I draw the line. Okay. Start with the line. Start, start it at your origin. Draw straight up. Right click. Escape the line. Select the line, which I, I kind of told you this a little bit differently. Select the line and then choose construction. Okay. So construction's right here again. All you want to do is just get it so that that line is construction. Some of you guys accidentally have may have driven, drove, uh, drew, 
this is your other object as a construction, okay? If you did, you can always select on them and then just toggle them back. It would turn out as a dash line. If that dash, that long dash, short dash, that's a center line. Okay, kind of looks like Morse code. Yep, exactly. Now, in order for us to mirror, you're going to find an icon that's going to look like an L and another L. It happens to be right underneath my initial. I'm going to click on that mirror. First thing it's going to do is ask me to pick what I want to mirror. I want to draw, I want to pick this item, this item, this item, and this item. Easy peasy, right? Okay. okay. I'll do it one more time. Ready? Uh, let me do a. Let me do a. Okay. First thing. I have my my line selected. I got my construction line selected. I'm going to click mirror. And then I'm just going to simply select the lines that I want to mirror. Just like that. What's that? Why? You already dimensioned it. You've been dimensioning as you go. <clears throat> All right. So now... The last thing that we need to do today on this drawing is we are going to save it. We've done a lot, okay? The last thing that we are going to do, go back into that sky, well, let's see here. And we'll stop here because we've only got four minutes left.